Good morning, dear friends and family. What a privilege to be able to speak to you from the Word of God. Today I'd like to speak to you about pruning time. But let's read John 15, verse 1 and 2. I'm reading today from the Passion Translation. It says, I am a true sprouting vine, and the farmer who tends the vine is my the farmer who tends the vine is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping uh, up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. Now the primary task in vineyard management is pruning. Prune to ensure maximum yield and quality. And one of the biggest influences on yield and quality is precise pruning in winter. This, is, this involves removing almost up to 90% of the previous season's growth. And the ultimate goal of winter pruning is preparation for next season. Now pruning is very important for us to grow in our walk with God. It's therefore important to, to regularly evaluate our lives and ask God to show if there are things that need to be cut off because it hinders our relationship with Him. Ask yourself the question, am I dragging dead branches around in my life? Maybe it's a bad relationship, an old wound from the past, a negative attitude that keeps you from enjoying life to the fullest, or, or something you use for a sense of security other than God himself. It would be nice if I could see what God sees and say, yes, Lord, let's get rid of that dead branches. But, but you know, many times... We are too scared to give up the known for the unknown. I'd rather walk with my dead branches that holds me back because I know than getting rid of them and walk freely, which I don't know. See, because we're scared for something, something new that we cannot see or understand. Now, the truth is that it's miserable to drag dead things around, and the only answer is the pain of pruning. The best thing that can happen to you and me is for God to prune us. The, and the process is not always easy, but the results are phenomenal. But you see, to get pruned, to bear fruit, you and I must stay in Christ. We cannot bear fruit on our own. God loves you and, and he, wants you to do, he wants to do great things in and through you. He wants to teach and train you, deposit his character in you. To be kind and gentle, patient, loving and forgiving like Him. Because you cannot develop these fruits on your own. Listen to what John 15, 4 says. So you must remain in life union with me. For I remain in life union with you. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit. So your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to me. In other words, we need to spend time with God. Our relationship with God is much more than going to church on Sunday and reading the Bible and praying as a religious duty. God wants a close, personal, intimate relationship with each of us. When we live in a close relationship with Him, we have the assurance that He will never leave, never forsake us. Matthew 28, 20, Jesus says, I never forget that I'm with you every day, even to the comp completion of this age. Romans 8, 35 says, who could ever separate us from God, from the endless love of God? Uh, absolutely no one. For nothing in the universe has the power to diminish his love towards us. Hebrews 13, 5 says, I will never leave you alone. Never. So when Daniel's three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, went through a pruning process, they were thrown into a, fire, fire, a burning fiery furnace. In that furnace, a fourth person joined them in the furnace. That's what King Nebuchadnezzar saw. A fourth person like that, like he says, like, like the son of the gods. But we know it was Jesus Christ. That were with him in the fire. When Daniel was thrown to the lion's den, God closed the lion's mouth. At this moment, we live in uncertain times, but I'm convinced that God is pruning his church. 
The church has so become so dependent on programs and entertainment that the Holy Spirit is no longer the source. Isolation and separation have made people to become dependent again on the Holy Spirit. Dependent for daily growth and nourishment. It made families to spend time together again and appreciate each other. Now we pray many times, Lord, please stop this plague or Lord, prevent me from becoming terminally ill or Lord, help me not to lose my job. And sometimes the Lord answers these prayers and he, pre he prevents the, the things that can harm us. But you know what? There are other times when, when God wants you to experience him and then he does not prevent these things. But he meets you in your crisis amidst these things. He wants you to realize that like Shabbat, uh, Shadrach, uh, uh, Meshach and Abednego, that even if you're inside the fire, you will not burn, will not scorch you because he is with you. Even though the lions roar around you, as with Daniel, he closes their mouths and teaches you to trust him. Remember one thing, when pruning a vineyard is not, is, it's not left to a, a layman. Pruning a vineyard, pruning a vineyard is, is, is this process is, is too important for maximum fruit yield. It takes a master's hand to prune. So the, mate, the master of the universe, God the Father, prunes you and me. It is God himself who prepares us for our next season of fruit. So if a vineyard is not pruned and the shoots only grow wild, there's almost no fruit because pruning is essential for growth. Now I don't care how you, your life looks spiritually this morning. What I care is that God has a word for each and every one. So I just want to give you a few promises out of God's word. To those who are weary, Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, are you weary? Are you carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me. I will refresh your life for I am your oasis. To those who are burdened by sin and the hardship of life, Jesus promises in Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, he says, simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways and you will discover that I am gentle, humble, easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me for all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. To those who are lost, Jesus says that he is the way, John 14, 6. Those who feel guilty, Listen to what Romans 8, 1 has to say. So now the case is closed. Listen carefully. The case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. To those who fear death, Jesus assures us, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Bible assures us in 1 Corinthians 15, 54 and 57. It says, and when that which is mortal puts on immortality, and what now decays is exchanged for what will never decay, then the scripture will be fulfilled that says death is swallowed up by a triumphant victory. So death, tell me, where's your victory? Tell me death, where's your sting? You see, it is sin that gives death its sting and the law that gives sin its power. But we thank God for giving us a victory as conquerors through our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. To those who fear that God has forsaken them, he says, he says in Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you alone, never. For those who feel God is probably angry with him, he has a comforting word in Romans 5, 1. Our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us. And now declares us flawless in his eyes. This means we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God. All because of what our Lord Jesus, the anointed one, has done for us. 
finally to God's children. He says this morning, and I've read this verse right in the beginning, John 15, 1, 2, I am a true sprouting vine, and the farmer who tends this vine is my father. He cares for the branches he connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. Child of God, pruning is part of every Christian's life, every child of God's life. And we all experience seasons. And as we are now amidst winter, starting winter, which is normally a pruning season, so also we in our spiritual lives need to be pruned. Whether we like it or not, if we want to bear much fruit, we need to be pruned. The dead branches need to be cut off. We must just allow the Father to do what He does best. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you this morning that we know this. To yield more fruit, we need to get pruned. But we get pruned by a master's hat. Thank you that we know that we'll never be alone. That you are with us. Doesn't matter what we go through. Like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego experienced in the burning furnace. That God is with them even in the furnace even in what we go through even in COVID, even in cancer even in whatever comes our way we know we are not alone you are with us in it thank you father god that we can depend on you with our whole lives in jesus name amen my god bless you and learn to trust in god Trust the master's hand in your life to bring forth the best in you for the glory of his kingdom and his name. May God bless you. Amen.